Toyota 5G, many topics have been worked on. In this particular study, we're proposing highly optimized solution for heterogeneous traffic, which we believe should be integral part of 5G as we move forward. This work is done by Bell Labs, a research arm of Okatilucent, and we are looking ahead two to five years, and 5G is an important topic that keeps us busy. We are working on massive MIMO, extremely large number of antennas, uh, ultra high bandwidths with millimeter waves, D2D, and this particular topic is addressing highly optimized support for heterogeneous traffic. What we mean by heterogeneous traffic within the same radio access network resources, the same bandwidths, we would like to support video, uploads, downloads, web browsing, together with a very important short packet transmissions, both in the uplink and the downlink. Why short packets? We need short packets for new applications such as IoT, machine to machine, mission critical applications such as connected cars, autonomous cars, which still will be connected within the network. And even in the current networks, we see a lot of short packets in a form of keep alive messages. LTE, it's very good when it comes to transferring large amount of data because it goes through a very demanding synchronization procedure called closed loop. And this synchronization procedure allows mobile terminal and base station and all of the other mobile terminals to be tightly synchronized in time and frequency. And this is working well. And if we start from LTE, you can see here the spectrum of a typical uplink LTE transmission, which is getting into our prototype base station. It's being decoded and in the form of 10 megabit per second video, presented on the screen over there. It's occupying 20 PRBs, a part of LTE carrier. Now, what we're going to do next to it, we're going to activate a bursty short packet transmission, which will be occupying very limited radio frequency resources. And now Holger will activate bursty asynchronous short packet transmission in the uplink. Please, Holger, do it. As he did it, the data is now received, indicated by this yellow square. If you take a look, it's occupying a very narrow frequency band. Unfortunately, because it's asynchronous, very bursty, it's causing damage to our high data rate video. So LTE needs to be fixed, improved upon. And this is the subject of this work. The way how we are doing it, we are taking the existing LTE and we are imposing a very sharp filtering, very selective filtering, such that we can separate different heterogeneous transmissions, in this case, in the uplink. If you take a look here, we're going to switch to these new filtered waveforms. We're calling them universally filtered OFDM for 5G. And you see that we significantly reduced out-of-band interference and video would be still running. And now, next to it, we're going to add our data channel, asynchronous, very bursty channel. Please, Holger, edit. It's corresponding to the uh, green square here, indicating data transmission. Video, which is being received on the other side, it's in a perfect shape, quality is preserved, even though next to it we've got very bursty short packet transmission. And this is the technical solution we are proposing, 5G UF OFDM as a modification that would come as evolution and possibly 5G version of our radio access technology. Where we are taking this technology? Of course, we plan to follow the 3GPP route through standardization from now to 2020, but we are trying to establish some early pre-standardization trials with our key partners, service providers, and our partners when it comes to chip design and terminal design. Thank you.